Hey guys, welcome back to another video, and on this one, I'm going to be showing you the best Go Goat build for raids on Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Now, I have moved all the raid requests back one day because I really want to do this guy. He's really strong in raids, and I love his shiny that I just randomly found a few weeks ago. Look at that boy. So, um, in a raid earlier, I actually took on a six star Flareon and pretty much beat it with like a third of the time remaining. It was amazing, and it had Sunny Day and Flare Blitz. This Pokemon's going to be super strong. Let's get into where to find it. To get your Go-Go, what you're going to want to do is come right here on the map. This is where I find the shiny. I'm going to fly over to Alphanada and then make my way over. And what we're going to be doing is we're just going to be searching in the green grassy area around here, around there. And you will eventually run into your Go-Go and you can just go ahead and encounter it. And then you're going to want to catch it. Look at them red hooves. Miles better than the original. So after you catch it, we're going to get into the Terra type. And it will have the right Terra type as soon as you catch it because it's only a one type Pokemon. So you don't need to worry about that. Now, before we get into the build, I just want to say if you are liking these builds and these shiny videos and all the guides that we're putting out, make sure to subscribe, turn that notification bell on so you don't miss another video. There's plenty more where that came from. And I'd love it if you came over to the Discord. I can help you out even more over there. And it's tons of fun. I'll put the link in the description. And now let's get into the build. So like I said earlier, we're going to be running the grass type terror. It's going to be uh, the best terror for us because it's the only type we are. And there's not much else to it. We'll have it as soon as you catch your Pokemon. Now moving on to the item, the item we're going to be using is going to be the Choice Band. Now what this does is if your Pokemon's holding it, its attack goes up by 50%, but it only allows you to use one move all raid. Unless you faint, then you can use a different move, but we're just going to be using the same move all raid. It's one of my favorite moves on the game, but not many Pokemon have it. Now this item is going to be a little bit expensive and we're going to get it by coming over to Mesagoza West and we're going to be coming down here to the Deli Bird Shop right here. So once you make it to the Deli Bird Shop, just go inside, then click on Battle Items, scroll down, it'll be about halfway down and it'll be your choice items, you want to buy the choice band, it will cost you 100,000 poker dollars, so like I said it's a little bit expensive and then you just want to equip that onto your Go Goat. Next thing you're going to want to do is we're going to be coming over to the Chansey Supply Shop so we can buy a Nature Mint. So just make your way over there so we can change our nature. Now once you're inside the Chansey Supply Shop, just scroll down till you get to the Red Mints and click on the Adamant Mint. This is up in attack, down in special attack. It will maximize our physical damage because we are going to be a physical attacker. And that means we don't need special attack so we can just get rid of it. Like I said, up and attack, down in special attack after you use your Adamant Mint on your Go Go. Now, moving on to the EVs, we're going to be running HP and attack EVs to maximize that damage and make us survive even longer. As you can probably see, Go Go has incredible HP 450 when you've EV and IV trained it. Now, to get your EV items, what you want to do is you just want to come into a Chansey supply shop and the vitamins will be at the very top. We'll be buying the HP ups and the proteins for HP and attack. You'll need 26 of each of these and it will cost you 520,000 poker dollars. And if you want to put the extra points into summer, just buy an iron or a zinc and that will bring the total up to 530,000 poker dollars. However, if this is a bit too expensive for you because you're running a bit low on money, there is another way you can do it. And you'll just need to come to any deli bird shop. It doesn't matter which one and then just go inside and then click on general goods. Go to the bottom. There will be your power items and we'll need the power weight and the power bracer for this Pokemon. What these items do is they give you eight EVs per kill. So if we're killing a Pokemon that gives away one EV, you'll get nine EVs per kill. So buy those two and equip them onto your Pokemon. We'll be going through the HP first. I'm going to show you where to actually train these. There will be a video from this video and every build that I do from now on. In the description, it will be the full EV training guide that I released this weekend. So go and check that out if you want a full in-depth guide. So for the HP, we're going to be coming right here on the map. So just fly over to the lighthouse and make your way over. And when you get to here, the green grassy area, you can either take out the Latrunks that spawn here. They give one EV each or nine when you have the power item equipped. Or what I like to do is come down here, activate a fairy type sandwich and you'll get tons of Azuril spawning. So do they encounter power level two sandwich and you'll just see tons of them. There's one over there as you can see. I've not got one equipped right now. And then you'll just need to take out 28 of the Azurils and you will have your max HP. Now, what I would recommend doing when you're taking out these Pokemon, have a level 100 Persian with the Amulet coin equipped and also Payday. And what you want to do is use two PP ups on Payday. It will take it to 28 PP. 
and that's when you know that you've took out something 28 times and then you can just go to the pokemon center and then switch to a different stat it's very convenient now moving on to our attack what we're going to be doing is we're going to be flying over to south province area 3 to train our attack we're going to be taking out the shinx the young goose and the growlith there now the best thing you want to do is make a level 2 encounter power electric type sandwich and tons of shinx will spawn around this area there's one right there and you can also take out any young goose or growlith that you might see in this area they also give attack evs as well but when you use the encounter power sandwich it's going to be mostly shinx so take out 28 of those and then if you are using this persian that i showed you on the last one so you take out 28 of each of those uh, pokemon and you will get yourself 56 000 poke dollars back very convenient stacks up over time and then you've maxed out your EVs. So moving on to the IVs, what you want to do, go in your main menu, click on boxes, and then just hover over go, go. And if you're on your stats like this, just click the plus button. It will go to your IVs. As you can see, I've hyper trained everything except my special attack because we don't need special attack because we are a physical attacker. So I just want you to find out how many IVs you need to actually get maxed out because you might already have some and you can save yourself some money. When you find this out, just fly to any town that has a deli bird shop and make your way over to it. Once you're at the deli bird shop, just go inside and then click on general goods. Top item is going to be the bottle cap. For each bottle cap, it's going to be one max IV. So buy however many you need. It's going to cost you a max of 100,000 poker dollars. I actually need some of these bottle caps. I'm running quite low, so I'm just going to buy 100 of them real quick and that should do me for a while once you've bought your bottle caps all that you need come over to montenevra which is in the snowy area and then we're just going to be coming speaking to the person next to the Obama snow he will hyper train your pokemon click on your go go and then click bottle caps click hp attack defense special defense and speed and then start the training and you will have your max ivs as well as the evs and now you've sorted all your stats out now we just need to go through the ability and the move set so the ability we're going to be using is going to be Sap Zipper. Now Sap Zipper is going to increase our attack by one stage if we get hit with a grass type move and we also take no damage from that move. Our other ability will be Grass Pell. It's a hidden ability so you will need an ability patch to get it and this increases our defense by 50% when we're on grassy terrain. I don't think this is worth it for an ability patch and I also think Sap Zipper is better. Just in case, sometimes in raids, Pokemon will randomly use moves that are not very effective against you, and this could come to our advantage, could increase our attack by one stage, and we can't get hit by grass types. And because of the item we use, we're not going to be using grassy terrain, so the only raid where there will be a grassy terrain will most likely be if there's an Arbolivar on your team. Now to get this ability, all you need to do is catch your Go-Go, and as long as it's not an actual raid, it should just have Sap Zipper. Moving on to the moveset, we're going to have Horn Leech, Bulk Up, Leech Seed and Leaf Blade. Now the only move that matters is Horn Leech because of our item that allows us only to use one move. But well, I've added the three extra moves just in case you don't like that item because of the small risk that comes with Pokemon that have Disable or stuff like that. And if you want to be really annoying, you could put an actual shell belt on this Pokemon, use Leech Seed first turn, then use Bulk Up and just spam Horn Leech. I could see that being very annoying. It'd be like an, an infinite health go-go. Or you could use Metronome and just spam Horn Leech after you use Bulk Up and the attacks would just gradually get more powerful all the time. This Pokemon is just incredible, honestly. Now, Horn Leech, it does 75 power, 100 accuracy. This is one of my favorite moves. Barely any Pokemon have it on this game and it's quite powerful. And it restores our HP up to half of the damage we do to the target. Incredible. Bulk Up increases our attack in defense by one stage. Leech Life steals HP every single turn and gives it to us. And Leaf Blade is just a powerful move that's got 90 power, 100 accuracy, and it's got a heightened chance of landing a critical hit. Just in case you was using Shell Bell, then you could use Leaf Blade, and then whenever you need to heal, use Horn Leech. So all these moves are going to be very useful. Now you could exchange Elite Sheed for Grassy Terrain and use the other ability, which will increase your defense and increase your attack because it's Grassy Terrain and your attacks get 50% more powerful. And you will just heal every turn of Grassy Terrain anyway. Now don't worry because Horn Leech, Bulk Up, Leech Sheed and Leaf Blade are all moves that you can learn through level up so get yourself to level 100 and just relearn them all and you'll be good to go if you want grassy terrain however you will need to get the etm 
if you was using the actual shell belt, I would just recommend sticking with this. Oh, look at that. The pretty snow is out. It's so beautiful. Smash that like button if you're enjoying this video and let's get into some raids. So I reset for a six star raid about 20, 30 times. I didn't find anything we were super effective against. So we're just going to settle with a normal type. Let's get straight into it. Now, keep in mind while you're watching this raid, uh, this is twice as slow than it would usually be because we'd usually be super effective against them. I'm interested to see if we can still do this actually. Uh, we're going to start off with a horn leech. It's not doing too much damage as you can see. It'd normally be doing double that. So we use a second one that gets us back to full health. Sylveon sets up its misty terrain. Now all we're really after is that terrestrialize. It uses yawn. I completely forgot it had that. That's going to be a pain. So we use horn leech again and now we will have our terrestrialize if it doesn't take some away. It doesn't actually say we're asleep. I think because it put its misty terrain up we can't go to sleep now. I think it's every Pokemon on the ground can't go to sleep. So that helps us mess that's pretty lucky. We're going to terrestrialize and use Horn Leech to see how much damage we're doing then. Here comes the Horn Leech, see how much it's doing. So it's doing a bit more, but nothing too good. We're still out damaging the timer though, even though we're only on neutral. And you pretty much can't die as long as you're doing a certain amount of damage, because every time you use Horn Leech, you recover health. So we're pretty much staying on full health all raid. It steals some of our Terra Charge. So our next Horn Leech gets it below half health. It's Hyper Voice is only doing like 90 to uh, 110 damage. Now the good thing about using this choice item is if it removes negative effects from itself, that's fine. We don't like actually use any. And if it nullifies our stats, that's fine. We don't have any setup moves. So it has used Yarn on us now that the Misty Terrain's gone. Hopefully it uses Misty Terrain though. So we're gonna use another Horn Leech. It's not doing much damage to the shield. We're going to heal up to wake ourselves up. Hopefully it doesn't insta yarn us. It does insta yarn us. I'm hoping that it uses Misty Terrain. It uses Calm Mind, so now it's going to do even more damage with that Hyper Voice. Luckily, we're a physical attacker, though. So we're going to use Horn Leech, uh, do a bit more damage to that shield, and now we're going to need to actually wake ourselves up again. It's doing just under half damage now with that Hyper Voice. We heal up, get rid of that actual sleep. It's going to use Hyper Voice, does about 200 damage to us. And now we're going to use Horn Leech, do some more damage to that shield. Now it's actually doing about 20 to 30 more damage than we can heal at the minute because of that Calm Mind. So we just need to get the shield down as quick as possible. It's using Misty Terrain so we can't go to sleep now, that's amazing. But its attacks will be more powerful but if it's got Pixelate. Here comes another Horn Leech, this will break the shield. Now um, it is looking a bit worrying the amount of PP I've got left. I've only got three attacks left now. But just keep in mind you will only use half as much as I used because if you're super effective against a raid, which you most likely should be when you're using it, then you'll do double the damage and need half the moves. So we use Horn Leech again, and now we're back on full health, and that guarantees us the win, because it can't defeat us even with a crit now. So we're just going to use this last Horn Leech and defeat the Sylveon. Now we still had quite a bit of time remaining, even though we was just neutral against it. So you know that when you come against a Pokemon you're super effective against, this Pokemon is going to do a ton of damage and you're just going to be alive all raid. Let's move on to the second raid. So we're going to do something different for the second raid. I've changed the choice item to the metronome because I think both builds are just amazing. The choice item is better early game and the metronome is better late game because we'll just be spamming uh, Horn Leech so much. So you get a bonus six star raid and the video will probably be a little bit longer let's get straight into it so it's going to be a six star dark type tauros i didn't want to go against uh, someone we're super effective against because then you can just compare both of them when they're both neutral damage and decide which one you want to use so in this build what we're going to do is we're going to start off with a leech seed we are slower we get hit with a close combat but his defense does fall because it's such a strong move so leech seed is going to give us health back at the end of every turn so after you use that once, it's good for the rest of the raid. It's going to remove negative effects from itself already. And then use close combat again, reducing its defense and special defense again. So it's back on minus one. Uh, we're going to use bulk up second turn, increase our attack and defense. This is especially good against those physical attackers. And then we'll get some health back from the leech seed. And then we'll just spam horn leech for the rest of the raid. So it uses close combat, can't kill us without a crit. And then its defense falls. Because of that bulk up, it's going to be doing no damage to us now. Now we use Horn Leech. We get a ton of health back. It's going to go back to max health. But now the Tauros is going to use bulk up. A lot of mind games going on in this raid. But from now on, we'll just do more and more and more damage every single turn. This one will be 120% damage because it's our second Horn Leech in a row. And we'll just keep getting health back. I don't see any way it can kill us now. It uses close combat. 
And this Horn Leech is going to be at 140% damage. As you can see, it's doing even more damage because of our metronome. It's going to remove negative effects from itself. So now the burn's gone and all the defense drops from the close combats have gone. But now we can Terrestrialize. It's going to use close combat on us. And this is doing about half damage to us now. Its defense is going to drop. But now we are doing 160% damage with our Horn Leech. So it's essentially stronger than when we had the choice items. And there it is again, we get some health back from our Leech Sheet. And it's nullified our stats, but that doesn't matter now. We are so strong because of the Horn Leech and Metronome that it can't kill us. So it's took us to 189 health because uh, our defense buff has gone. But look how much damage this Horn Leech is going to do at 180% damage. It's going to do so much. It's going to put us back on full health more than likely. There it is. And the Leech Sheet is always there just for the added effect, just in case you need it at the very start of the raid. It's going to use Close Combat again takes us to 159 this time but we'll probably finish it off with this attack oh it's going to use screech at a random opponent but it's going to be the drifling it wouldn't have mattered because we could have come back and just finished it off if it did take us out but that horn leech was at 200 percent that we just used so essentially that's two choice items and we take down the tauros now uh, depending on what pokemon you are actually facing the metronome can be good in some scenarios and so can the choice item some pokemon won't give you the chance to get your metronome rolling like this if they have really high defense so that's why we've gone with the choice item but also gave you the option of doing the metronome so let's move on to the third raid so we're going to do another six star raid but those two are the best builds so um, we're going to do a super effective one this time but in this one we're going to do another build i might as well just show you all three builds that i mentioned at the start of the video this one is going to be with a shell bell instead of the metronome or the choice band this is a really toxic build you'll just be recovering so much health all raid i can only imagine that the raid boss that you're against will be a bit annoyed by the end of the raid but it's their loss let's start it up it's going to be a six star garganical rock type so first up we're going to use bulk up we're not going to use leech life because we're just going to be getting so much health back anyway there's an arboliver in the game as well so we're going to be getting health back from the grassy terrain uh, we get hit with a stone edge not going to do too much damage because we are very much a bulked up and guess what we're going to use it again we're going to go on a plus two attack and plus two defense with the metronome we use one leech life one bulk up so but i like doing two setup moves uh, when i'm actually using pokemon that haven't got the choice item so it's going to be two bulk up and then we're going to start horn leeching let's see how much damage we do we do a little bit of damage we're doing 50 percent extra damage because of the grassy terrain with our bolivar this pokemon works very well with our bolivar if you had a friend that you played with and they used our bolivar you could even get them to attack you while you have your sap zipper and your actual attack will go up by 50 percent not 50 percent it'll go up by one stage sorry so we're going to use Horn Leech. Now we just want to get our Terrestrial Eyes at the minute. It's going to use Stone Edge again. Let's see how much damage it does this time with two bulk ups. It's doing about 100 damage. But we are getting hit by uh, the Sandstorm. But the actual heal from the Grassy Terrain is countering that. We get we hit him with another Horn Leech and we get back to full health. Even if it didn't get us back to full health, Shell Bell would heal us even more after that. So it's just a, a really annoying build to have to face. Poor raid bosses. But sometimes we just need a bit of revenge for all the times we've been put to sleep in raids. Or when the shenanigans happen where they hit like 15 funders in a row. So we have Terrestrial Eyes. Look at that beautiful goat. And now we're going to use Horn Leech. See how much damage this does. So it does about the same as before because the grass terrain's gone. But it's going to be enough to heal us back up. The grassy terrain goes back up because the Arboliver has been hit. The amount of healing in this raid right now, I feel bad for Garganical. Oh, he nullifies all the stat changes and abilities on our side. We're going to use Horn Leech. I don't think it'll do much damage now. No, it doesn't. We still get back to full health, though. He's going to use Stone Edge. It'll probably do a lot of damage this time. Yeah, it's doing a half damage. It removes negative effects from itself. Uh, we're going to use Bulk up here. Now, the only thing that really annoys me about our Bolivar is the grassy terrain takes up so much time in the raid, the animations and all that stuff. We get hit with another Stone Edge. Can't believe he's not missed one of them yet. We use Bulk up again. We're going to use Tool Bulk up again so we can do the same damage we was doing earlier. Garganical's paralyzed. It wouldn't have finished us off anyway. Nullify my stats, I dare you. Now we're going to use Horn Leech again. Oh, it's doing a lot of damage now. Oh, it was a critical hit. That's going to get us back up to full health then. So it uses Stone Edge on us, does a bit of damage. We're going to use our Horn Leech again. But the uh, grassy terrain goes, so that's no good. 
It's going to do quite a bit of damage, though. We're just trying to get that shield away at the minute. Oh, it gets a critical hit with a stone edge and puts us to 166. Now, if you're thinking that this raid is miles slower th or, or just the same as the other raids, keep in mind Gargantical has 130 base defense. Its defense is absolutely incredible. I think it's actually got one of the best defenses on the entire game. So it probably wasn't the best raid to go into to show you how good the Shell Bell one was. It gets another critical hit and then uses Rock Slide. Back to back attacks, cheating. These are the hacks I'm talking about, guys. I'm glad I use this build now. Get payback on these Garganicals. So we use Horn Leech again. Now we're on less than 100 health. Let's see how much we go up to. Oh no, we're on 126. We go back up to full health. It's just incredible how much HP you recover from this. We didn't even need the Shell Bell part either. And then we finish off the Garganical with plenty of time remaining. Normal Pokemon normally have half the defense of uh, Garganical has. So that would have gone a lot quicker if we was fighting other Pokemon. And that's all three raids over with. And look at it, the beautiful sky. I hope you've enjoyed this build. Now keep in mind that whatever you're seeing in this video, the Pokemon will do a lot more damage than that usually because we fought two neutral six star raids and the fact that we beat them with Gogo -Go says something about how strong this Pokemon is. It'd usually be twice as quick. So I highly recommend building this. It's quite a fun build. You pretty much will never die using this build. Speaking of builds, I'm gonna put a Masquerade build on screen right now and it's surprisingly very strong and can actually take out six star raids. I highly suggest you check it out if you're wondering how Masquerade can take out six star raids. It's a very fun build and surprisingly strong and I'll catch you on the next one.